My sister, female 36, and her husband suffered from infertility for a long time. Yesterday we found that she's expecting, which was amazing. We were all happy for her because we knew how much this meant to her and her husband. They've been through so much heartbreak and disappointment in the past. She decided to gather the family and make the announcement at my parents' house. My boyfriend and I were invited too. We didn't know about it right away till post-dinner when my sister got up from her seat, held her husband's hand and made the announcement. We, the women, all got up to congratulate her. Once we sat down, my boyfriend seemed puzzled. He tried to talk to my sister, then asked her to tell him how old she was again. My sister hesitantly said, 36. He made a face and said, Wow, I didn't know women at this age can still be functional when it comes to breeding. Suddenly, silence took over, my sister looked down, and then her husband lashed out at my boyfriend asking what his problem was. My boyfriend tried to mumble something, that's when I loudly told him, shut the heck up, his name. He looked at me in shock and my family stared at him. He seemed very offended and mad. He quickly got up, took his keys, and rushed out after saying, excuse me. My mom replied, excuse you. I apologised to my sister, but she started crying. I was mad. I went home and fought with my boyfriend. He yelled about how I belittled him and insulted him in front of my family by telling him to buzz off. I told him that what he did was not okay and ruined my sister's long-awaited announcement. He said he was giving facts, not personal opinions. I told him I did the same then. He got more agitated and said I owe him a huge apology after publicly insulting him. I replied that he should have held his tongue, facts or not. He went outside and then started giving me silence till I apologised for what I said. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. What facts does he think he was just saying? The fact that he's completely ignorant about women and fertility? He should be embarrassed. He's a misogynist that needs to be thrown out. Functional? Breeding? Does he consider women animals? Jesus. If he's offended and embarrassed, he shouldn't have said such stupid things. Some people need their feelings hurt. The more concerning thing here is that A. He has no regard for your or your sister's feelings and B. He's punishing you for not giving him an apology. He's embarrassed? Did he think about you, who was embarrassed in front of your family because of something you have no control over, or your sister, whose big announcement was ruined by a childish and hurtful comment? He shouldn't be so self-centred. Giving you the silent treatment afterward is super manipulative. Yeah, the sister is, in fact, 36 and pregnant, so there's nothing factual about what he said. What fact does he think he shared with you? That he's plain stupid? I had my third at 38. Many, if not most women, can have children into their 40s and even 50s. 36 isn't particularly old to be having a child. It's very normal. Ditch the boyfriend, OP. Your boyfriend is a massive idiot who does not deserve an apology. I think he's lucky he left before sister's husband got to him. Here's the thing. Even if he thought it, it says a lot about his character when he said it. He could have waited till they were home and asked OP questions or just kept his ridiculous thoughts to himself. He thought it was acceptable to say out loud is an issue too. And then doubling down instead of admitting he was inappropriate. There are lots of things wrong here. OP, you mean your ex-boyfriend, right? How can you possibly be questioning whether he even has the slightest right to be upset here? He's shown his true colours and they aren't much to look at, let alone keep around. You'll make the whole family sigh in relief once you announce that he won't be making rude and misogynistic comments anymore. Ditch the whole guy, OP. Don't pursue a future with someone that awful. Okay, so my friend has been planning her wedding for nearly two years and she wanted me to be a bridesmaid. Unfortunately, some things have gone down over the last couple of years, a lot of her friends drifted apart, some wouldn't be able to attend for medical reasons, and she fell out with a few. Out of the nine bridesmaids she'd originally planned, only me and three other girls were attending. The day of the wedding was hectic. Bride got overwhelmed, so the other three bridesmaids and I whipped everything into order while she calmed down. Unfortunately, her hairstylist had cancelled, So I reached out to a friend and asked her if she could swing by last minute and help out. She did her hair and apparently the bride didn't like it. The bands she was using were coffee coloured, not white. She didn't have white and the bobby pins didn't match her hair colour and the ribbons weren't curled right. She said to my friend, are you an idiot? And I'd heard enough. 
I understand that it was stressful, but there's no need to name-call someone who got out all of their equipment last second and drove over 20 minutes to an event of someone they didn't even know as a favour, not even paid work, though I did offer. I told the bride she had to calm down, and she couldn't speak to my friend that way, but instead, she just ended up yelling at me as well. I told her we were all doing the best we could, and she called me pathetic and said it was outrageous that I'd be lecturing her on the most important and stressful day of her life. She said that she had half a mind to cut me as a bridesmaid, so I told her I'd save her the trouble and left. The aftermath was insane. I had the other three bridesmaids calling me to tell me I was an idiot and I was so selfish I couldn't put up with a little attitude for a few hours because she was stressed. Then the bride called me crying about how I betrayed her and how horrible of a friend I am. Bride's mother, who didn't previously have my phone number, called to tell me how disgusted she was at my attitude and even my boyfriend says I could have sucked it up. It was a total idiot move to walk out like that. My stance was that, high stress or not, I don't feel like she should have been calling my friend names, and I don't think she should have called me pathetic. Stress isn't an excuse to talk down to someone, in my opinion, especially people who are trying to help. But I could be wrong. So, I guess she was acting like the bridezilla I thought she was. Or am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You're never an idiot for refusing to accept abuse. The way you go about that refusal can make you one, but all you did was remove yourself from the situation in your case. You did nothing wrong. Funny how she already lost five bridesmaids along the way. Yeah, I'm still digesting the fact that she started with nine bridesmaids. It sounds like the bride is truly just an idiot. Yes, weddings can be stressful, and things can go wrong, and having slight outbursts can be tolerated. Someone came last minute and helped her for free, and she dared to act like that? Stress or not, that was unacceptable. I hope your friend left too. Oh, and she took two years to plan a wedding, and there were still so many things that went wrong. I planned mine in three months, and it was perfect. After two years, you should have backup plans for your backup plans, not go nuts over very normal stuff like people cancelling last minute. Yeah, I can see how this woman has lost a few friends in the past couple of years. Some brides think that just because this is their day, they can treat people like crap. That's bridezilla entitlement at its finest. You saved her butt and got this in return. I totally understand you left. Good riddance. We had a little garden party a few days ago at my mom's long-term partner, John's weekend house. His older son, Charles, was also there. Charles is 32, lives with his mother, is unemployed, and maybe worked a total of one year in his entire life if we add up the bits. He doesn't have any mental or physical disabilities, he has a degree in computer science, he's just lazy and always makes excuses for why he doesn't have a job. Charles spends his day playing video games, taking care of his two dogs, his newest excuse as to why he can't work, keeps his mom's apartment clean and does their laundry. He thinks that's enough contribution. His younger brother also lives with them because if he moved out, he would have to stop financially contributing and their mom couldn't afford to feed, clothe, etc. Charles and herself anymore. I think it's fair to say that Charles is a leech. In the conversations, Charles was asked if he's dating anyone or goes on dates. He replied, Nah, I'm not interested. Those witches are not good for anything. They only want my money. So I'm not going to let myself be used by anyone. I really didn't like how he referred to women as witches and I found it ridiculous that he was afraid of women wanting his money as he doesn't have any and mooches off of his mother and brother. So I laughed in his face and asked what money. He's just a useless broke loser who's using his poor mother, leeching off of her and he provides no value to the world. He's a burden on everyone around him. He just said that he contributes more than enough. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. His mother owes him a lot and left. I'm not going to say that I feel bad about Charles because I don't, but John looks so sad and devastated and I ruined the party. John is a great guy and I feel bad for him. I know he blames himself for Charles. Am I the idiot for insulting John's son in front of John? Do I owe John an apology? Not the idiot. John is sad because he knows what you said is true. Charles is what makes him upset, not you. But if you want to talk to him about it, I think that would be okay. Maybe start by apologising for allowing yourself to get drawn into an argument at the party because that is a legitimate thing to apologise for. You are the idiot. Opie, you could have stopped at what money? It was John's party and you should apologise. 
Being right also means handling it effectively, not just spewing words. John was, after all, your host. And while Charles was disgusting and unacceptable, you took down his entire life rather than his gross comment. If Charles had used the N-word or said something about gay people, not a single person here would find the OP out of place. But misogyny is so ingrained, it doesn't have the same impact. He deserves to be called out, shamed, and ridiculed. If OP had addressed the misogyny, that would be different. She didn't. None of what she said addressed how he spoke of women. It was all personal insults. Nothing she said is going to make him rethink anything. Instead of addressing the problematic behaviour, OP sank to his level with many personal insults. I'm sure it was satisfying, but it's not calling out. I really feel like this is objectively an everyone's the idiot here situation, but I'm going with my gut and giving you not an idiot. You are 100% correct for calling out the disgusting comments and speaking the truth to put the child in his place, but you probably violated time, place and manner in how you went about it. He certainly has it coming and could probably benefit from being called out on his situation. Apologise to John, but explain why you blew up. You owe Charles nothing. My baby mother and I have a four-year-old son. My wife and I have an older son and a daughter. Yes, I did cheat, and it was the worst, most regrettable thing I've ever done. My wife knows, and we're working through this. It only happened once. I found out she was pregnant, and now I'm doing my best to be a good husband, while also fathering my third child. So my baby mother is weird about this. She's always wanted the family life, and obviously didn't find this with me. However, she wants in some way to feel part of my family, which she isn't. Part of that is through our son. My wife and I have a very solid agreement that I have no unmonitored contact with her, and we talk about nothing but our son. My wife has never met my other son and has no desire to. She also doesn't want our kids to feel that he's part of our family. My baby mother has been pushing towards this. She wants our son to feel like he has siblings, which, yes, they are his blood, but I wouldn't say they're family. Honestly, I don't even think he cares. I think this is more his mom's attempts to weasel her way in between my wife and me and separate me from my family again. However, I'm taking a hardline stance against that. Recently, I went to pick him up from school to have a day with him and he told me that his mom had been telling him to tell me that he wanted to meet his older brother and sister. It was very clear she was putting words in his mouth to sway me. So, when I dropped him off that evening, I looked her dead in the eye and told her, you are not my wife, and my kids aren't going to be involved in anything that has to do with his. Our son will not meet my other children until they're all adults and can understand this. She lost her crap with me, and it exploded into a massive argument. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. First of all, you broke your marital vows. Your contempt for your son's mother is gross and misplaced. Plus, you're punishing your son and his mother for your crime. I hope you realise that once they're grown, all three of your kids will know what you did and how you punished your youngest child for your infidelity. Also, I don't believe for a single moment that you cheated just one time and ended up getting her pregnant. You're only admitting to that one time and your wife may not be smart enough to see through the lie, but the rest of us are. My favourite part was when he said she was trying to separate him from his family again. OMG, she's a harpy seductress, and OP couldn't help himself because of her wiles. It's obvious who the wife blames for her husband's infidelity, talking about this woman like she forced him to cheat with her. I feel so sad for his kids. Yes, he has some hard work to get his wife to trust him again, but there's a small child that needs his father, and his father has another family. These kids deserve to know each other. You can keep baby mama and wife as far apart as you like, but all three are your kids, and all three need a dad. So man up and deal with it. His wife is an idiot too, to be honest. She took him back, knowing he cheated and fathered another child, but wants to pretend his son doesn't exist and isn't a part of their family. His son is her son and daughter's brother. She stayed with OP, knowing he was still involved with his son. At this point, it is what it is. Her kids have a half-sibling. If she wants to stay married to him, she needs to accept this child into their lives. And even if she doesn't stay married to him, she needs to accept that her kids may form a bond with his son. This is such a mess. Thanks to the big C, all my classes are online via Zoom. Luckily, I've managed to stack all of my lessons on Fridays this semester. 
So, attendance isn't 100% necessary, but encouraged. Since we're only three weeks into the semester and I'm trying to wrap my head around new concepts, I've also clocked into some bonus lectures that are recorded, but it's helpful to sit in on them live because it's extra engagement and I can ask questions. So, basically, my Fridays are booked out from 9 to 5. 8 a.m., I took my dogs for a walk, said hi to the neighbour, and had a chat about our plans for the day. 8.45, we said goodbye, as I was going to make some breakfast and a couple before my tutorial. 1.45, during my tutorial, there was banging on my front door. I ignore it. It continues for five minutes and gets louder. 2.28, I get a text from my neighbour to tell me she just got fired from work because she needed a babysitter. Her regular cancelled last minute, and I didn't answer the door. She's a single mom and has minimal support. 6.30, I take the garbage out to the bins, and she flies out of her house to screech at me for being selfish. This gains an audience from surrounding houses. The neighbour across the street gives me dirty looks and comforts the crying neighbour, saying that I'm a selfish person. Said neighbour does not like me because of an incident two years ago where I would not let her borrow my unregistered and not safe to drive car when she was having an emergency. I just retreated into my house and two hours later, I'm wondering if I should have just chilled at uni to answer the door or something. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Good employees don't get fired for having a childcare emergency. If she could text, she should have texted the first time instead of just banging on the door. No one answers a wild door bang when they're busy and not expecting anyone in the days of texting. I would always assume it's someone I don't know because anyone I know would have texted. It only took 45 minutes for her to get fired because she couldn't get a sitter one time. So yeah, there's more to that story there. But regardless, you are in no way responsible for her or her child. I'm sure she's in a difficult situation. But that doesn't give her the right to dump her kid on you or make everything out to be your fault when things go wrong. Also, why didn't she ask any of her other neighbours? If they agree with her and think you're so selfish that you didn't take the kid in, surely they would have done it no problem, right? Poor planning on her part does not make an emergency on yours. The neighbour lashing out at you, calling you selfish since she lost her job for a no-show, should be finding a more stable child-watching situation than just a babysitter that can flake off at a moment's notice. There's probably more to that work situation than just not showing up one time. Sorry you had to deal with this.